Good morning class. Welcome to your daily current affairs on paper Hindu. Let's see today's articles. More of uh, local articles. Let's go for something else. Yeah. So yesterday I was uh, discussing about one issue with respect to protection of languages of states. So FSSAI, your food, food security cooperation, just a moment, yes. So it has given certain notifications, so food safety and standards authority of India, FSA, FSSAI has given certain norms and regulations to Tamil Nadu and, and Karnataka stating that the name on curd should be replaced. So instead of stating it as curd, it should be mentioning as dahi and in brackets you can mention your state language, whatever this uh, majorly spoken state language, that language term synonymously you can be adding it in brackets. That is what FSSAI has given regulations to Kerala, sorry Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. So what happened? So it has proposed to drop this English term and currently Tamil Nadu has mentioned that we will not print the he on Abin curd packets. That is what Tamil Nadu has mentioned because it is threatening our language. So it has mentioned that Tamil Nadu Chief Minister Stalin has criticized FSSAI direction stating that Stalin said that is a unabashed insistences of Hindi imposition. So he is mentioning that it is forcible imposition of Hindi language on non-Hindi speaking states which is threatening again our own national language. So our own state majorly spoken language. So that is what he has mentioned and we will not be printing this dahi on or as dahi on our cut packets and we will be using, we will be writing our own language on it. That is what Tamil Nadu has mentioned. Next. Get data on attacks on Christians in two weeks, says Supreme Court tells government. So recently Supreme Court has observed that uh, there are growing cases. So there are growing cases where Christians are being targeted. So in the minority people almost like different minorities are getting affected and currently there are a lot of uh, Christians who are recently being targeted and if they are reporting any such cases, FIR is not, not being filed with their complaint and is filing against them. So that is the issue which they are facing. So Supreme Court has told that bring all those data, give us the data where Christians are actually affecting or getting affected because of growing threats or growing issues towards them, incidents. So we need the proper data, that is what Supreme Court has asked for. So once for all, it is getting this data then it will come out with some judgment or some kind of discussion or some kind of uh, recommendations to state government then we will discuss it more. Next, India is indeed mother of democracy says Modi citing Mahabharata and Vedas. So currently our prime minister have attended this virtual address so he has given virtual address that means he has attended a meeting to the summit of summit for democracy co-hosted by US, Costa Rica, the Netherlands, South Korea and Zambia. So all these countries have participated in this virtual summit where this is a summit for democracy that means all the countries which are actually following this democratic form of government those countries have hosted this meeting and India is also part of this virtual summit. So in that summit Prime Minister has mentioned that India is the mother of democracy. So far ahead, other, before other countries or other countries have started this terminology of democracy or people's rule, India have started this kind of elected representation and rule by people. It has started since Vedic times. So since Vedic time and Mahabharata or the evidences for, for, the, for the presence or for the existence of democracy in the country, that is what Prime Minister has mentioned. So, this, this terminology is important where you can add it to your answer. 
So, of course, he has mentioned that indeed India is a mother of democracy. So, that is what he has mentioned and another terminology that he has used, we will see, which we can add, yes. So, as far as that, that is what important and another thing which, he, which we need to know here is that even Pakistan was actually invited for this particular summit of democracy, but it has not attended because China was not part of this particular meeting because it is not democratic, right? So, of course, even if it is being a democratic, whatever it is, it is tilted to a socialistic and the ideals of China is not in similar lines with other countries. So, despite China is being a democratic country, still it is not being invited for the summit, that is why Pakistan has not attended, okay. Next, so India was among 120 countries invited to the second edition of virtual summit for democracy. So, among 120 countries, India is also part of it and India has co-hosted this with US, okay. Next, let us go to next other article. So, now you need to understand that foreign policy of Pakistan is affected by China. You need to understand that it is not being sovereign anymore in terms of its foreign policy because if China is not being invited, then why should Pakistan not be attending that particular meeting? You need to understand how they are in relation or in sync with their foreign policies, okay. Next, PFI. So, your people front of India, so I will tell you what is the gist and then we will go. So, PFI tells UAPA tribunal, it helped people build resilience against its IS propagation. So, basically what happened was the people front of India has been banned. So, this is an organization which has been banned under anti-terror unlawful activities, UP Act last year. So, last year stating that it is having some conspiracy relations with IS, so terrorist group with IS that is why uh, it, this particular group or this particular association has been banned from existence, okay. So, under UAPA which is unlawful activities prevention act, so has told UAPA, so this PFI has told UAPA that organizing public campaigns to develop knowledge and skills attitudes to develop and build resilience against IS propaganda. So, what it has sub submitted to this tribunal is that we have actually worked to create awareness and propaganda against IS. So, we are not some, some other association which will actually be harmful to the society, but in return we are actually promoting or creating awareness against IS. That is what this particular association have told. Why I am explaining this? Important for your internal security. So, you need to know what are the organizations in the news that has been banned in part of UAPA as part of your internal security, okay. So, that is what until here is actually enough for your exam. Rest all news, if there is any update on removal of this ban, then you will be, uh, you will be further reading it, okay. Next. Army to get important first of its kind, whenever it is first of its kind important as part of your SNT defense, okay. So, army to get satellite will help to provide mission critical data. So, Ministry of Defense has made into some agreement, has signed three contracts which is worth of 5400 crores with Bell, two with Bell which is Bharat Electronic Limited, Electronics Limited and worth 2400 for procurement of automated air defense control and reporting system which is project Akashthir, Akashthir very important. So, can be directly a bit for your prelims. So, here the thing is Ministry of Defense have procured under the project name Akashthir. So, procured certain kinds of satellite satellites which will actually give it some critical data. We will see what is this critical data and how far this will be helpful for them. So, and for the army and surround electronic support measure, 
system for navy so for army it is akash sphere and sarang electronic support measure for navy so sarang for which is related to your navy so that is what it has helped for and currently isro has developed see and this will be working with your communication satellite department of space for an advanced communication satellite gsat 7b this particular satellite will be given from isro so the geostationary satellite being a first of its kind in the 5 ton category will be developed indigenously that means it is wholly developed by india so state of one of our country by isro and this particular satellite will be considerably enhancing the communication capability of indian army by providing mission critical beyond the line of sight so what is it about currently our isro will be providing army so ministry of defense it will be providing army certain satellite which is under fight and cap cap capability or capacity so that it will help them to understand the communication capability or to enhance its communication capability and to provide information which is beyond the line of sight communication that means so if i am able to see you and if i am able to communicate that is in line of sight if i am unable to see you but still i have to communicate that is beyond line of sight similar way how you call but i can't go through call right if i am in uh, if i am through aircraft i will not be able to communicate properly so for that they created one particular satellite based communication system so that they will be able to communicate with the co pilot or with the other people who are beyond the line of sight so that is what this particular satellite will help it will come under fight and capability and developed indigenously by isro important okay yes and the contract for project akshatiri is worth for 1982 crore here the name project akshatir is important next more of a political news today so very few articles let's see no evictions for great nicobar project so currently government has started this great nicobar project so what is this project about we will see important again because pvtg groups are there in great nicobar okay so what is this pvtg hmm? here particularly vulnerable tribal groups so these are of very small in number and their cultural heritage should be protected so they they should not be evicted from their own places whenever you are building a particular infrastructure project or if you are making any developments in a particular area where there are pvtgs then definitely you should make sure that their culture should not be disturbed their lifestyle should not be disturbed so ensuring that in this article they have mentioned that no evictions that means we will not make people go out of their place for constructing this particular nicobar project great nicobar project so what is it about government says around 7000 sorry 7 Point one one four square kilometers of tribal reserve is proposed to be utilized for the project. So seven kilometers is actually being utilized for development of this particular project, around seven kilometers. But that is subject to protection of interest of tribal people. That means we are not going to disturb their interest. So as long as they are there, they will be ensuring that particular place, culture will be ensured. No evictions happening. So yes, they have clearly mentioned here. what will be utilized or how this particular 7 kilometers be utilizing so the gaine uh, the union government will not allow displacement of tribal people to make way for 72000 crore great nicobar project and the tribal ministry told rajya sabha on wednesday so what he has mentioned the project amount will be 72000 crore and will make sure that tribal people culture will not be disturbed so there there will be no evictions happening so the project being implemented by andaman and nicobar islands integrated development corporation so who is working with this it is developed by or implemented by andaman and nicobar islands integrated development corporation one corporation com uh, company and includes transshipment of and so what does this project include transshipment port so a port will be there where you will be shipment for shipment purposes there will be one transshipment port an airport 
then a power plant. So, for electricity generation obviously they need electricity generation in this particular place right and a greenfield township. So, from scratch they will be developing it. So, all these will be built by this particular ANIIDCO. So, this corporation will ensure all these projects be, be built but not disturbing tribal people. So, who are the tribal people? Just a moment. Yes. So, who are the tribal people present in this particular area? They are especially in the place where they are building this particular township or this particular project are from tribal reserve. I will tell you the name of the particular tribes who are actually living there that is Shompan tribe again important for your prelims. So, when such things come important. So, Shompan tribes are actually living in this particular place where this project is being held. There are many tribes who are present in Great Nicobar Island in which this particular project place Shompan tribe are huge and which are classified as PVTG which are particularly vulnerable tribal groups right. So, yes. So, they told that their interest will not be the interest of tribal population especially Shompan of the PVTG of the PVTG are not affected adversely. So, they have clearly mentioned that we are not going against the interest of that particular tribal group understood. So, that you need to know. So, it is a project of 72,000 crore and people who are living in this particular area are Shompan tribe of PVTGs right next. So, NCLAT which is again a tribunal national company law opinate tribunal that means if there are any companies so business big chains like Google or uh, these people can go to these tribunals for any kind of issues. So, grievance redressal or any kind of fines if they have been allocated to then they will go for further debate and discussion whatever the judgments renewal or whatever it is they will go to this particular NCLAT. So, what it has done NCLAT upholds this 1338 crore penalty imposed on Google. So, it has mentioned that yes they have to pay this 1338 crore. Why? So, this particular backdrop is that 1338 crore was being imposed on it by CCA which is Competition Commission of India. Why? So, this article once there was in news I have already explained but for your repetition. Initially what happened was for suppose if my phone is Android let us say my phone is Android I have some pre-built apps in my phone are you able to know like the Facebook or any other apps I have pre-built apps. So, it will make me forcefully use, use that particular app instead of me going to play store and search for a relevant app when I have an ill-built app I being a customer of this particular mobile Android I will be forcing myself to use those particular apps right or wrong right right. So, it is indeed reducing the competition of its other apps in similar lines whatever the mark uh, whatever the applications that are available in play store in the similar lines let us say um, a simple example. So, if there is this particular Facebook and if I have Twitter, Twitter is not an inbuilt app but I am interested to use Twitter but only Facebook is already installed pre installed in my uh, phone just in case I am just giving you a hypothetical situation. I wanted to use Twitter but I have Facebook. So, I will be forcing myself to use only Facebook right. So, definitely even if I am not interested I will be using this particular application. So, in that case it is reducing the competition right. So, on that competition competition commission of India have laid down this 1338 crore penalty on Google because of its pre-built apps in Android right. So, while holding that the investigation did not violate the principles of natural justice the tribunal set aside certain directions issued by CCA. So, it has mentioned that the natural justice has been upheld based on that only we have given the this particular we have upholded or upheld this particular particular fee or particular fine on Google they have to pay this penalty ok fine. Yes. So, it has been mentioned here that the tribunal set aside orders 
directing Google to allow app developers to distribute apps through side loading and not deny access to play services to disadvantage of original equipment manufacturers. So clearly if you can see it set aside directives that would have forced the company to allow developers of app stores to distribute their apps app store through Google Play Store. So they are forcing only certain apps will be available right and also pre-built apps see pre-installed apps on Android services there will be pre-installed apps so that it will force the Android customer to use this particular application out of obligation. Even if I am not interested, I will be using it. So that is a part of, they have mentioned that it has fined Google for its anti-competitive practices because of this pre-installed apps and abusive conduct in the Android mobile device ecosystem. Now you know right why that particular fine has been levied and it has been upheld by NCLAT. Okay, fine. Next. Respect territorial integrity, Doval tells SEO member nation. So yesterday we have discussed that SEO committee have been started, India is also part of it and they are hosting this particular meeting. Russia also is going to participate in this particular meeting and Russia is also part of SEO, right? We have seen yesterday the member countries too. Now the international connectivity projects should respect sovereignty and territorial integrity of the nations, says national security advisor. Ajit Doval. So yesterday I have mentioned that all nation security officers of SEO countries are going to meet. So in this meeting, Ajit Doval, our national security advisor has mentioned that if you are developing your infrastructure policies or infrastructure projects, whatever it is, if you are developing some kind of infrastructure, respect the other country's sovereignty and integrity, territorial integrity. So this is directly questioning the BRI policy. Okay. So your that initiative just a moment yes so it is questioning this particular initiative that is being followed by China and Pakistan they are trying to levy infrastructure not levy they are trying to build this particular infrastructure in POK areas where Pakistan occupied territories so line of control areas they are trying to build this infrastructure so at, at the end they can claim that we have started all these infrastructures in this particular place too as it is our own area. With respect to that as a backdrop our national advisor, security advisor has mentioned that you should be ensuring that you will be respecting one country's, I mean each country's sovereignty and territorial integrity. That is what this article is about and as all nothing is required only that is actually mentioned in this article. Next. SEBI pushes norms to ensure better disclosures and boost transparency. So earlier I have mentioned that um, because of Adani stocks issue, the government has asked SEBI that do you have any regulations so that you can protect the customers when there is sudden fall in stock prices. Being from a middle class family, it will be adversely affecting that particular people. Most of this stock prices arena are being used by middle classes, aiming for any increase in their stocks. So once if they are affected by this market scenarios, their income or economy will be, economy in the sense, their income or family will be falling drastically. So they have asked SEBI to ensure or ask them to find out or file any kind of norms so that it will protect its customers from adverse loss of money. Okay. In that respect, SEBI has given that certain norms it has ensured so to protect its own clients or customers. What it has mentioned? What it has done? SEBI or Security Exchange and Board of India move to improve disclosure norms and transparency by making mandating or by mandating that large listed companies must confirm or deny price sensitive market rumors and in the case of the material board decisions disclose them to exchange within 30 minutes. So to bring more transparency to ensure timely disclosure of in, uh, information by listed entities it made mandatory for the top 100 listed companies by market capitalization confirm or deny, deny or clarify any market rumor. So what is this? Clearly it has mandated that if at all, suppose let's say Adani stock issue, 
if there is anything that they have to confirm like yes our stock we are under losses or no we are under growth so we will be definitely hiking in this particular arena such kind of statement should be issued by top 100 listed companies so that that particular investor will be aware right so make sure of the media that is what sebi has told you should be mandated whoever are in the top 100 list these companies should be mandatedly giving clarification they have to verify confirm deny or clarify any market rumor suppose let's say on reliance there is one particular rumor not now hypothetically i'm just in, just giving you an example let's say there is one particular rumor that one particular x company not reliance let's say topmost company x company is have occurred 10000 crores loss in particular project it has incurred 10000 crores loss this is a rumor prevailing in market so there are huge investors who have invested into this particular company now immediately once this rumor comes almost all investors try to get uh, try to sell their stocks in this particular stock market immediately the price will fall so before the scenario is being happening being being commencing then what that particular company has to do is it is obligated to issue a statement denying or accepting or clarifying that particular rumor so it should not be a rumor as being a company's chairman or being a company representative they have to come to media they have to mention that no this is not this is not a correct news it is a fake news yes this is a correct news genuine news and we are going to uplift so investors no need to bother so this kind of clarification should be given by the stock listed companies that is what sebi has come up with trans to ensure transparency such kind of mandations it has put forward right so that is about this article i hope it's clear next no charge on normal upi payments npci yesterday i have mentioned that they will be levying interchange interchange tax which is which will be varying from 0.5% so interchange tax it is clear here see interchange charge charge of 0. Point, sorry 0.5% to 1.1% on transactions to merchant so merchant transactions i'll tell you what is all what are all these things and then we'll discuss let me write it down merchant transactions all the transactions which are more than 2000 rupees so rupees more than 2000 whatever are the merchant transactions through UPI, so UPI based platforms, it can be through wallets or cards issued by this UPI. So you have Paytm card, you have phone pay wallet, some vouchers, so all these things, just a moment, so all these things will be there. So based on that, if you are transacting anything more than 2000, so what is this anything, what it will actually involve, that you need to know. So on this interchange charge will be levied so what is this about now let's say i am um, i am a person basically some some middle class not middle class some family let it be i am a person i have to purchase um, some education let's say i am um, going to pay fee for one particular institute okay or institute material to be precise so to some particular institute i am going to pay some fee of 25000 let's say okay so let me make it clear for you with 10000 so it will be easy for calculation 10000 rupees i am going to transact to one particular institute uh, me being a person who want so this is some educational institute some educational merchant merchant in the sense who some trade or some business person it may be a single person or a company it doesn't matter okay so now i am going to pay now what i am using here through which means i decide to pay let's say through phone pay through phone pay i am going to pay this 10000 rupees to this particular merchant through phone pay wallet let's say through phone pay wallet i am going to pay this amount to this educational institute 
so that I want their material, some other thing. What is this interchange charge? Now, I am paying through this phone pay wallet digital transaction. So, through UPI based uh, wallets or any of this merchant, merchant transactions, I have been paying them. Okay. Now, after I pay this, I am using some wallet here. So, it is obligation on this receiver end. So, receiver end is this merchant. He will have a bank account, right? He will be having one, he or she will be having one bank account. I will also be having one bank account. Through my bank account, through UPI interface only, I am transacting. So, this merchant bank account should be paying my bank account 0.5% to 1.1%. As I have chosen education, education will be paying less. So, education merchant tra uh, transactions will be levied 0.5%. So, out of this 10,000 rupees, he, this particular merchant bank account should be paying my bank account 0.5% of money. Are you able to understand? So, here you will be getting, how much is this? Yes. So, now is it clear for you? If I pay 10,000 or let us say more clearly, let me take for you 100 only. If I am purchasing something for 100 rupees, but actually it should be more than 2000. So, I am paying for 100, I have to pay, pay 5 pies. So, if it is 1000, I have to pay. So, I have to pay 50 pies if it is for 100. Then if it is for 1000, I have to pay 5 rupees. So, if it is for 10,000, I have to pay 50 rupees. Understood? Clear? So, that is what it is clearly. Just a moment. So, now the obligation on merchant bank account to my bank account as a consumer for this transaction through wallets, this transaction to merchant inter transactions to merchant bank is obligated on this education or some merchant to be paid to my bank account for a charge of 0.5% to 1.1%. Clear or not? Okay, so this is your interchange charge levied now. Okay, yes. So, just a moment. Yes. So, that is what I told you. Clear, right? So, I hope it is clear. So, whenever, just for your repetition, now there is a merchant bank, any institute or any anything, merchant, I am purchasing, let us say I have placed some order in Amazon, I played through, I paid through phone pay wallet. So, now, I am paying it is more than 2000, so I have considered ideal case that, let me say I have considered, I have paid 10,000 rupees from my bank account, bank account through phone pay. I have paid phone pay wallet, I have paid 10,000 rupees. So, this is the receiver end of bank account. From here it is obligated to pay to my bank account for an interchange charge of 0.5% to 1.1%. So, if it is an educational institute or health which is mandating for a basic amenities, basic facilities, then it will be levied with 0.5%. So, approximately it is around 50 rupees paid if it is 0.5%. Five percentage in that way you need to calculate okay so it will not be impacting the customer that you need to understand okay next yes so now in with respect to that what is this article say clarification article no charge on normal upi payments so this is completely about merchant trade i am trading to some business it's not from daily transactions so daily transaction if i am uh, giving certain amount to my friend or my related to whomever it is that will not be charged any excess amount that is what a clarification given by NPCA. So, what is NPCA? National Payments Corporation of India. So, it has been given clarification that interchange charge of 1.1 percent on merchant transactions exceeding 2000 done using prepaid payment instruments which is PPI on UPI which is unified payment interface that can be a phone pay, Paytm or Google pay. These three are 
topmost UPI payments in India currently. So, would only be applicable for PPA merchant transactions and there would be no charge to customers. That is what I told you. Now, in this particular scenario, do I have any charge? If I buy some institute material, will I have any charge levied? No, right. That particular institute have to pay to my bank account for this conversion of money. Okay. So, that is about clarification about this particular interchange fee. Clear? So, that varies from 0.5% to 1.1 percentage. That is clearly mentioned in yesterday's article. I hope it's clear. So, yesterday I've got, uh, some people have asked me for uh, again explaining this. So, I went in depth for you. Right? Next. Trade deficit with China crossed 71 billion in the first 10 months of financial year 23. So, in the first 10 months from 21-22, in the first 10 months, we have, we have cons, ca, like we have taken the data, 71 billion is the trade deficit. So, what is trade deficit? Imports minus exports, okay. So, whatever the exports that we are doing from our country and whatever the imports that we are getting from the same country. So, let us say, what is trade deficit? So, let us say this is about China, right? So, China and India. So, from our country, I will export some goods and from their country, I will import some goods. So, this difference where imports is greater than exports, okay. In such case, I will be having negative balance of trade. So, this negative balance of trade has been in the first 10 months, how much it is? 71 billion and on the record last fiscal year has crossed 101 billion. Last fiscal year it has crossed 101 billion and now for the first 7 months it has increased to 71 billion. So, the trade deficit with India which uh, with China have touched 71 billion in the first 10 months of 22-23. So, you need to understand that that is fiscal year in the sense we are still in March then how come 10 years have uh, 10 months have completed. Because we are still in March, how 10 months have completed? You would have got doubt. No. 22, 23, first 10 months. Okay. First 10 months of data. Fiscal year from April to till, till March. So, till March also no. So, that 10 months you have to calculate. Okay. So, with just 1.7 billion short of billion short of record high of 73.31 billion in 21-22. That means in 21-22 entire year it was 73.31 billion of trade deficit witnessed and now within 10 months only it has crossed 71 billion mark. So, definitely it is going to be more than this particular 21-22 fiscal year. Okay. Next, shared by whom? Mocky, Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Yes. Next. So, I think one last article left. Yes one last article. How to manage India's solar PV waste problem? So, one thing is fine. We have our own target that net zero energies by zero uh, net zero energy by 2070 is our target. That means, we have to convert completely into renewable energies, renewable energy source by 2070. Good. We are taking uh, a lot of steps towards green energy or clean energy mechanism. That is fine. In that, one of the prominent way of generating electricity through renewable sources is through solar energy. So, to generate energy through solar, what we have to use? Solar panels. Photovoltaic cells will be placed in the solar panels, which will, when sun be imposed on it, it will convert this heat energy into electrical energy. That is how your solar uh, energy works. How your solar energy is being generated is that photovoltaic cells will be placed on solar panels which will convert which when the solar energy is being that means which when sun is imposed on it then it will convert the heat energy into electrical energy. Now, the issue is that we are installing lot of photovoltaic cells all over the country. Currently, our solar energy's potential installed potential is 62 gigawatts solar capacity installed is 62 gigawatts as of now. Now, what is the issue is, what about the waste that is being generated? 
Now this solar volt photovoltaic cell, uh, photovoltaic waste, I mean photovoltaic cells will generate certain kinds of waste, right? It is not like it will be existing for entire lifespan. Waste will be generated, expiry date will be there, right? It might be worn out or it may fail or after few, few of the times it will stop working, definitely. It is also part of cell, your battery cell, similar to it. So, because of that, what is the issue is this particular photovoltaic waste is being generated, how are you going to recycle it? The waste is generating hugely because of our motor towards clean renewable energy, then what about this waste generated through photovoltaic? How is it threatening our country? India is in top 5 countries with renewable energies and it might grow very hugely within 2070. Now what is our issue? issue is with solar PV waste. So, India's challenge in the growing informal handling of PV waste. So, our current challenge is growing PV waste informal treatment. That means, we are not treating it well. Suppose, let us say we have dry waste, wet waste in the house. Okay? We are treating it well, no? We are giving it to recycling and we recent article we have seen that even this disposal is not being recycled well. We have a standard disposal mechanism where municipalities have 90 percent waste disposed, but recycling it is less than 20 percent. In the same way, here there is a growing issue with PV waste, which is not treated well, which is not treated or which was not recycled well. Only about 20 percent of the waste is recovered and the rest is treated informally. That means, how much waste is recovered? out of the total 100 percent waste that is being produced, only 20 percent of the waste is being recovered and rest of the waste is treated informally. So, you never know it is being used efficiently or being disposed wastely. Okay? So, as a result, waste often accumul accumulates at landfills which pollute the surroundings. Also, this might create fire too. So, certain chips or whatever is being installed into it, if it is not treated well, then definitely it is polluting the surroundings and it may again incite fire, similar to the case in Kerala. Okay, Brahmapuram, there was one issue, right? Same way. So, India is expected to generate an enormous amount of PV waste over the next 20 years. So, next 20 years, India will generate ex exhaustive or extensive PV waste. Why? Because we are taking steps towards renewable energy. We have a target in 2030, we have a target in 2050, 2070, we have different targets. So, definitely huge PV waste will be generated. So, with respect to that, there was one particular report given in 2016. According to this report, by International Renewable Energy Agency, India could generate 50,000 to 3 lakh 25,000 tons of PV waste by 2030. Very important perspective always mentioning that yes, we have to convert to solar, we have to convert to wind energy or hydro power energy uh, as part of environment protection. Then what is this waste? Is it actually protecting our environment from its degradation? So, that is again a question mark. So, it is not always turning into clean energy way, but the negative aspect should also be addressed. So, proper criticism for your answer. So, 50,000 to 325,000 tons of waste is estimated to be produced by 2030. This is a report given in 2016 by International Renewable Energy Agency and more than 4 million tons by, 250, by 2050. Okay? So, yes, India's PV installations which I have already told is currently 62 gigawatts and it is dominated by crystalline silicon. So, what are the materials used here? They have mentioned like encapsulant, yeah, encapsulant, aluminum frame, copper wire, silicon wafers, silver tin lead are also used with this particular crystalline silicon. To make this PV, PV which is photovoltaic cells, panel, cell panels, all these materials are being used. So, they can be significantly recycled too. So, they can further be used in other sectors too which is not happening formally. Only 20 percent have been recovering. Rest all, it is not being recovered, can be disposed with no care. That means, further recyclement is not processing or no proper data about it. Okay? Yes. So, these panels near expirations, how it can be recycled? 
not really important this part but just for your information. So some portions of the frame are extracted and sold as scrap. So all those copper wires or aluminum frames, these can be removed and can be sold as scrap material. And junctions and cables are recycled according to e-waste guidelines. So whatever are the junctions, clamps, whatever the small assembly units will be there, right? These particular assembly way of units can be disposed or dismantled and can be used as or can be recycled as part of e-waste guidelines. And the glass laminate is partly recycled and the rest is disposed as general waste. So all these are the way how it is being recycled. And according to the report, this is another report, latest report as, to, as of 2021, approximately 50% of the total materials can be recovered. And India's challenge is the growing informal handling of PV waste. That means through the generated waste of photovoltaic panels, almost 50% can be reused. It can be recycled and can be recovered and can be reused. But only 20% is informally being recovered. Only recovery is only 20%. Then how can you ensure the proper recyclement? So that is about this article. So that's it for today. I think, yeah. Yes, that's it for today. Thank you for the session. We'll meet tomorrow with another daily current affairs session. Thank you. Good day.